except maintain one zero thousand. Electrical, and uh, some people say let this get back to about 20 before the second engine, or you can go by that, or don't care. Well, I'll tell you. The reason that everybody does whatever they do, whether they're waiting for this amperage or waiting for this amperage, is whether they know it or not, they're allowing the generator that was just a starter to cool. Right. And cooling is all about time, not about amps. Oh. So I just say, if you, timer? Yeah, and I, and I'd rather have you hack a clock and come up with a time that you're happy with and that's better than this. So maybe like Because this minutes. depends on how healthy the battery is. Sure. It depends on the temperature of the battery. I mean, it, there's a lot of variables of amps charging and all that stuff that it's just too many variables to... What would you recommend? I'd hack a clock and go uh, whatever's comfortable for you, uh, two minutes or one minute or whatever you want. And let it, let it cool. I, ha I wish I had the data on the heat generated and then the dissipation of heat after that fan, because there's, as you know, there's a fan on the front of that starter generator. And as soon as it starts spinning, right. it's blowing nice air cool, or cool air through there. So uh, I'd love to have the, a graph of temperature when you start, obviously it'll start getting hot, and then how it dissipates, and see what that time of function is. Whether a, a minute it starts leveling off, or two minutes, or what? Okay, we're going to fail the engine, and we're going to rotate at the normal airspeed, 86 knots. And as soon as we get a positive rate, the gear is coming up. We'll climb uh, visually, visual picture. We'll hit the opposite rudder pretty firm. Uh, take the tension off of the stick. Level off, whatever is comfortable, 400 feet, accelerate to 120, and then flaps up. Oga, coming up. Excellent. Now I will, I just will caveat that I'm not going to fail the engine. I'm going to simulate failure to, by going to idle. Sure. <laughs> if Thank anything, you. If anything goes wrong, you got that engine back and push it up. Okay. Landing gear, landing gear, landing gear, landing gear, landing gear, landing gear, landing gear. Landing and that gear. outboard button, there you go. Beautiful, look at that, just climbing right at VYC, that's perfect. Getting about 400 feet per minute. The yaw damper we don't want to engage quite yet because we're still moving that that rudder to adjust. We're not climbing like a bat. But we're not at VOISE. Pull it up. Remember the flight director? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to uh, do that for you. Your flight directors are now good. Contact. Watch. Have a good flight. Fly right in those flight directors. There you go. Let's Okay, we're looking for about 120 knots. Yep. And, that, and the reason why I don't engage the auto-amper, as you can tell, as we accelerate, it doesn't require as much rudder. But That's it, really a good tip about the... Uh-huh. Because I, I find myself really pulling the aileron, and then I realize I'm not putting in enough rudder. But we got to accelerate, so... Uniform, did you want the full approach or vectors to final? First one, full approach. Uh, first one, we'd like a full approach from high damp. Eclipse 2, Yankee Uniform, Roger. Resume on navigation, VFR, high damp. On nav, VFR to high damp, to Yankee Uniform. Good afternoon, departure, Cardinal 3, 4, Okay, so keep that below 5 degrees. You keep bringing it up to 7.5 and, and we just can't get acceleration going. So keep it below 5. Keep that VSI right at 0. And we're going to get some acceleration. Oh, okay. Because this is the problem with the high altitude hot days, 
is it takes it could take 10 miles to get to 120 knots to bring these flaps up. Right. And that's why... Heading 030. Heading 030 to Yankee Department. And that's why we've got to really evaluate when it's safe to do this. Remember to trim forward if it's want to always pull the nose up. No, I think I'm just keep following the command bars. Okay, here we go. There you go, just throw it up there. And now, as the flaps move, so does the bug. For my VYSC. Uh-huh. It's going to meet the VYSC wherever it shows up, and I'm going to take a stab at it right there. And now it fly the flight directors. Get in those wingtips. Now, if you want, you can have the autopilot do that. That would be nice. Yeah. There you go. Heading. It's already there. Yaw damper. It's already there. Yeah, Everything's already, already there. All changed. Yep. Okay. As our FMA says. Yep. Now let it. Let it take care of that rudder. Now it, it won't take care of the rudder. You've got to keep that rudder there because the yaw damper is not going to take care of that. Unless you trim it out. I'm going to leave it. Unless I'm going to put two feet on it. Yeah. See now the now the, the yaw damper is now going to fight every movement you make. So you just have to push through the clutch if you want to make a change to the rudder. Is this okay, or would I be better off? Well, what I what I would have done is, well, one, in the climb, I would have just let it let it go, and then once I leveled off at my altitude, then I would trim everything up with the with the yaw damper and autopilot off. Once I got everything trimmed up, power set, then the autopilot on. Because you'll see that now that we're leveling off and we're going to increase airspeed, it will require less rudder. Two Yankee Uniform, maintain VFR at 9,500. VFR 9500 to Yankee Uniform. You got the other end of the back. I'm sorry, I just completely did not absorb the last piece of information you were giving me. Okay, so the yaw damper, people think that it will it will correct the yaw from adverse yaw. It will not. It will only dampen the yaw. And as you can see, we're out of, out of uh, yaw because the yaw damper is not going to correct for it. So if I disconnect the autopilot and the yaw damper, you'll feel the airplane whoop, come right back to where it's supposed to. And now that it's all trimmed up, now I can re-engage the autopilot. And now we're all trimmed up in, in, in everything. Because the autopilot will only trim in pitch. That's it. It won't trim in yaw, and it won't correct an adverse yaw. It only dampens yaw, just like the yaw damper says. It will dampen any excursion, okay. but it won't actually... Four, five, <clears throat>